Traders to Rulers, Chapter 7. In this chapter, we shall cover the advent of English East India Company, the conquest of Bengal, Battle of Plassey, Battle of Baksha, its causes and the results. The English East India Company was formed by a group of merchants from London. It received its monopoly rights of trade from Queen Elizabeth in 1600. This company came up with its main objective to trade in spices and obtain cotton from India, which was quite famous all over. In India, the Portuguese had already a flourishing trade under the Mughal patronage. The British defeated these Portuguese and got permission from the Mughal emperor to set up a factory soon at Surat in 1612. In 1615, the English ambassador Sir Thomas Rowe got permission from the Mughal emperor Jahangir to open more factories at Agra, Ahmedabad and Baroch. Encouraged by the initial success, English East India Company thereafter goes on to develop its settlement in Madras, Bombay and Calcutta. In 1639, on a piece of land which they had received from the Raja of Chandragiri on the eastern coast, here they started fortification. They built a small fort called Fort St. George around their factory. The first English factory in Bengal was established at Hooghly in 1651 under the permission of Sultan Shuza and Subadar of Bengal. 1661, Charles II, the King of England, granted the company a charter by which it could issue coins, fortify its establishments, maintain its army, and exercise jurisdiction over the English subjects living in the East. In 1668, Charles II handed over Mumbai on lease to the company, which he had got from the Portuguese as a part of the dowry when he married a Portuguese princess, the Catherine of Braganza. The company attacked the Mughals, the company was defeated by Aurangzeb, and the British were driven out of their factories in Bengal. Finally, the company apologized and agreed to trade under the protection of the Indian rulers. So the Mughal authorities pardoned the English. In 1698, the company acquired from the Subadar Azim Ushan the Zamindari of three villages, Sutanati, Kalikata, and Govindpur, the present sites of Kolkata. This was on a payment of Rs. 1200 to previous owners. Again, fortification was done here and they built Fort William around their factory. Villages soon grew into a city which came to be known as Calcutta or now called as Kolkata. In 1717, the company secured the emperor from the emperor Farukh Shear of Farman, confirming the privileges granted to it earlier and extending them to Gujarat and the Deccan. Thus, British settlements in Madras, Mumbai and Calcutta became the centers of commercial cities. The company which came to India as a trader in course of time realized that in order to obtain maximum profits from Indian trade, it has to secure political power backed by force. Therefore, it gradually turned out to be the rulers all the way from the traders. The Bengal conquest shows a milestone in the time period given out. 1757 was a battle of Plassey and in 1764 there was a battle of Baksar. In 1765 immediately dual government was introduced in Bengal. Prior to that in 1717 as we saw Farukh Shiar has issued a firman to East India Company to carry on duty free trade in Bengal. In 1772 Warren Hastings became the Governor General of Bengal and he abolished the dual government in Bengal. During the first half of the 18th century, 
Bengal was ruled by the strong Nawabs. They exercised strong control over the British traders and did not allow them to misuse the privileges granted to them. Therefore, East India Company remained a mere zamindar on the, of the Nawab of Bengal. The political ambitions of the company were frustrated, but commercially, the company started flourishing. The beginning of British political sway over India began with the Battle of Plassey, fought between the forces of Nawab Siraj Uddallah and the English East India Company took place on the banks of the Bhagirathi River, about 150 km north of Calcutta and south of Murshidabad. The company won a decisive victory over the Nawab of Bengal on the 23rd of June 1757. This helped expand the company's rule over much of India over the next 100 years. The conflict with the company and the Nawab of Bengal, Siraj Uddallah, arose when the Nawab was challenged. The Nawab challenged the British activities. These were the causes for the Battle of Plassey. They go as non-payment of taxes, levying of heavy duties on Indian goods that entered Kolkata and which was under their control, fortification of their factories as we just saw in two instances, capturing the French settlement of Chander Nagore in March 15, 1757. Robert Clive, the governor of Bengal, won over some of the members of Siraj Uddallah's court, like his commander-in-chief, Mir Zafar and Khadim Khan, who commanded the Nawab's troops. After this diplomatic manoeuvre, Robert Clive marched towards Murshidabad to fight against the Nawab. On 23rd June 1757, the rival forces met each other on the battlefield of Plassey. The major part of the Nawab's army, led by the traitors, did not take part in the fighting, and the Nawab was forced to flee. He was captured and put to death by Mir Zafar's son, Miran. Mir Zafar was proclaimed as the next Nawab of Bengal. This battle brought in the results as Mir Zafar now gave away the company the right to free trade in Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. That means no duty to be levied anymore. So it was duty-free trade. The company got its zamindari of 24 parganas near Kolkata. And the company and its officials were given over 300 lakh rupees by Mir Zafar. Thus, the battle paved a way for the British mastery over Bengal. After the Battle of Plassey, the English East India Company did not remain merely a trading company. It became a political force to reckon within Bengal. However, Mir Zafar, the new Nawab of Bengal, failed to meet the monetary demands of the company and was forced to abdicate in favour of his son-in-law, Mir Qasim. Mir Qasim then granted the company the zamindari of the districts of Bardwan, Midnapur and Chittagong. Soon, Mir Qasim realized the need to free himself from the company's yoke and began to assert his authority. So, the British had now drained the resources of Bengal. There were revolts against Mir Zafar and he was unable to meet any further demands of the British. Therefore, they replaced Mir Zafar with his son-in-law Mir Qasim as the Nawab of Bengal in 1760. Mir Qasim proved himself as a capable ruler. On one hand, he was trying to improve the finance at the trading issues of his region. And on the other hand, he tried to satisfy the British. But when the company misused the trading rights, he took side of the Indian merchants. This led to conflict with the British. As a result, the Battle of Baksar happened in 1764 and Mir Qasim was removed from his position. Mir Zafar again became the Nawab of Bengal. So the causes that led to the Battle of Baksar can be shortlisted as Mir Qasim 
subdued the zamindars and compelled the officers to refund to the state all the revenue he denied the company undue trade privileges and abolished all duties on internal trade thus placing the indian merchants on the same footing as the british the company did not accept this and declared war on mir qasim and defeated him 17 in 1763 so mir qasim fled to awadh and formed an alliance with shuzaud dawla who was the nawab of awadh and shah alam ii the fugitive mughal emperor the three allies clashed with the company's army at baksar in 1764 and were completely defeated this battle of baksar firmly established the british as masters of bengal bihar and odisha the results of the battle were that the english power in northern india now became unchallengeable the new nawab of bengal became their puppet the nawab of awadh a subordinate ally and mughal emperor shah alam ii their pensioner the company got its nizamat functions nizamat functions that is like the military defense and the foreign affairs of the province and the right to nominate the deputy subedar or diwan from emperor shah alam ii the company got its diwani functions diwani functions are the right to collect the revenue from bengal bihar and odisha for an annual payment of rupees 26 lakhs to the emperor thus the company got these functions from the emperor and the nizamat functions from the nawab of bengal so diwani functions from the emperor shah alam 2 and nizamat functions from nawab of bengal robert clive concluded the treaty of alabad with shuzaud dawla the nawab of awadh by this treaty shuzaud dawla surrendered alabad and kora and agreed to pay rupees 50 lakhs as war indemnity by the second treaty of alabad the mughal emperor shah alam ii was taken under the company's protection and made to reside at Al- reside at alabad he was assigned alabad and kora ceded by the nawab of awadh in return for the diwani of bengal bihar and odisha so these are the causes and results of the two famous battles battle of plassey and battle of baksar according to your syllabus we need to go through this much as per the revised syllabus thank you